Well, welcome to the Bowling Point. I'm Richie Ware and this is Gerald Blaine. Now the last Bowling Point, we talked about some low O2 conditions. Um, we talked about a manual process and now we really want to talk about today is the automatic process. Now we are an Autoflame representative, a tech center, and we wanted to talk real quick of how Autoflame actually handles the low O2 condition. Yeah. Um, yeah, because this is really a critical safety issue for all boiler plants. And we have a couple of different ways uh, that low O2 conditions can occur. And I'm gonna talk about how they occur and how we can prevent them. Uh, one condition is you could be operating your boiler, you might be at a very high uh, firing rate, and for whatever reason, you lose your fan. Well, when you lose your fan, uh, you start creating that low O2 condition developing CO and so forth. And you have these uh, mechanical uh, switches here for a uh, low air condition, but those limit switches do not kick in until you get to the lowest point on the air curve. The problem with that, and, th and that you do have to have by code, so we do have that, is uh, while that air is dropping, you're flooding the boiler. It's still running, fuel still going in, no air to go with it, and then it kicks out. And if you were to kick that air back on afterwards, you would have that uh, explosive condition in place. Well, what we do with an auto flame is we have an air proving sensor here. So unlike where this trips it out when the fan gets very low and floods the boiler, we commission in an air pressure proving system at every point on the curve. So if we're in a high firing rate uh, situation and we come off of that, whatever that commission point is, which is a very small band of the firing rate, it knows exactly how much air it will need at that firing rate. When it comes off, it shuts down immediately. We don't flood the boiler, we shut it down on contact. Mm -hmm. so. So that condition is very well covered with this uh, air pressure proving system. You, you made a comment about CO, um, and how, how does it continue to make CO? Maybe just make sure we address that with folks. Well, when you don't have the proper combustion, when you don't have the right fuel air ratio, you start creating CO because that is unburnt fuel. Mm -hmm. And it requires a certain amount of oxygen to do that. Mm -hmm. So that CO, it, when this fan is coming down and it doesn't hit this, hasn't hit this limit switch and you don't have this, you're creating a, a poor burning condition, plus you're just pouring raw fuel in. Mm -hmm. So CO is a big deal to try to, to monitor, of which an O2 trim system doesn't even see. Mm. So. That only focuses on oxygen. It only focuses on oxygen. Mm. So yeah. I wanna take us around to the back, talk about another condition that can occur and how O2 trim systems can't see that as well. All right, so we come back to the back of the boiler, and this is where we have our EGA, which is our exhaust gas analyzer. Um, and this is really, uh, the stack's back here as well on the back of this boiler. And this is really where we're, we're actually analyzing the oxygen. We get our, our, our feedback, if you will, of the oxygen that's going out the stack. Right, right. And we're in the back of the boiler because that's where the stack is here. It could be a two or a four pass and it would be in the front. The point is that you do your measurement on your O2s and any other combustion uh, issues from the stack. So this is a wet extraction system. <clears throat> so here we have a, a probe where we're measuring the O2. Now, if this was just an O2 trim system, here's where you potentially can run into a problem. Uh, if you had a, a leaky gasket here, or maybe you had an older stack and maybe a couple of pin hose from corrosion, you could be pulling in tramp air. And when you're doing that, that's being read by the trim system. Okay. So when the tramp air is coming in, it's reading both what the fan is doing mm -hmm. and the additional air coming in. Mm -hmm. So a trim system, an O2 system is gonna say, okay, look, my oxygen level because of the tramp air is rising. So if it starts rising up, it's supposed to be designed to go to 3%, it rises up four or five, it says, okay, I'm supposed to be at three, so I'm gonna tell the fan to slow down mm -hmm. so that it can compensate for the air. Mm -hmm. 
problem is we're measuring it here on the back end. That's different than what's going on in the furnace. Right. So now you could start creating a explosive environment, excess CO, because we're falsely closing down the fan. So <clears throat> what you have with this exhaust gas analyzer is it reads three different parameters. Okay. It reads the O2, the CO2, and the CO. A lot of systems will give you a number for CO2 because it's supposed to be an inverse correlation to the O2. Right. This is not an inverse calculation. This is actually measuring it to see if it's correct. Okay. So if we get into this condition here where we have tramp air coming in and the O2 start to rise, this is not just gonna say, we'll lower it back to the O2. It's gonna check and say, well, is the CO2 right? Is the CO elevating? And if those things are occurring and it can't make the adjustment to clean them all up, then it's gonna either, depending on how you have this unit set up, it's gonna alarm you or it's gonna shut you down while that condition starts. Okay. So we're not gonna wait for a bunch of bad things to start happening. Right. So, so it definitely keeps us in a real uh, safe, environment yes. instead of letting it get to a bad environment. Right. Um, again, we don't want that high CO at, right. at all. So, all right, great information, Gerald. We appreciate it. And we'll see you next time on The Boiling Point. Well, appreciate Gerald hanging out with us. Always love to get some good knowledge. And to this week's episode was really, really good, I felt. Now, there's all kinds of classes that we're doing, combustion classes um, that were actually on uh, hands-on and they are back. So the COVID-19 thing really put us into a, um, a tough spot where we could not have people here at the school and we are ready to get people back together and we are taking all the COVID-19 precautions to make sure that we're staying uh, uh, with mask, of course, and temperature and feeding people differently. So we're putting everything in place so you don't have to worry about that. Now, one way that you can continue to get your uh, education is go online. If you haven't seen it, awesome class that we've started with, the Boiler 101, um, kind of that first step of, uh, of, of being a boiler guy um, or lady, where you may be an engineer, you could be an operator, you might be a maintenance uh, manager, uh, you could be a salesman, um, but that online class is outstanding. Jude and Scotty have done a super job with that. And you can go check that out at the Boiler Universe or Ware site and go to the Boiler University, go to the training tab, uh, online training tab, and you will find it and be able to um, basically just do it right there in your own in, at home. So and, and it gives you an opportunity to get that class done at your pace. And it takes um, I guess it, we, we, we did about 30 days where you can actually get that done and it's. 14 to 16 hours of video, if I remember right. Right, Tyler? Yeah, 14 to 16 hours of video and content. So just uh, go out and check it out. And we always appreciate um, all that you guys do for us um, here at Boiler University. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter if you don't mind. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. And as always, share those videos for us. We'll see you next time on The Boiling Point.